All right, y'all. So after I watched Back to the Future Part Two yesterday, I uh, I watched the season four episode one of Westworld. Here's my little screenshot here. So I I got really into Westworld over the last uh, you know, I guess couple of weeks. I don't know. Like I never heard of Westworld before, and uh, and uh, so I got really into it. I wa I binged the whole show. And, uh, so yesterday was the season four premiere, so I'm all caught up. If you haven't seen it yet, shut the fuck up and get off. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. So I was watching Westworld. And so season four, I was under the impression that season three and four, because season one and two, and season one and two are like a direct continuation there's like maybe three month gap, but then like it explores what happens in between that three month gap. Um, but uh, season three, there's like a, an, another like short gap. There's like maybe a couple month gap in between season two and three. But in between season three and four, it's revealed that there's like an eight year gap, right? So there's a lot of time that went by, right? And so, Ed Harris's character, who in the end of season three killed the real Ed Harris, so we know that Ed Harris in this uh, William, aka Ed Harris, um, in this season is the host version, which is like the concentrated evil, the like, you know, because like the hosts or whatever are like the host data that are like replicas of the original people are like only data that they have from the theme park. And so, cause William was always a fucker in the theme park. This version of him is like the pure fucker. It's like that evil energy, like the Majin bullshit from Dragon Ball, you know, like when Vegeta goes the Majin Vegeta and then he's like evil again. It's like that, you know, it's just like, damn. So anyway, so, we, like, there's a lot of confused stuff going on. I'm very confused, but, like, in the good way. So then we got, like, the main character, Dolores, right, who died at the end of season three, is is back in a body with different hair and with a different accent and, and vocal pattern in, like, another future. Like, it, it, it looks like it's the same future from season three. Like, it looks like or, like eight years in advance or whatever. It looks like that, but it's also like, why is she there? How did she get rebuilt? We don't know! And then at the end of the episode, when Tedward comes back, that motherfucker died. He wasn't even in season three. And now Tedward's back? I'm losing it, man. So anyway, Dolores is like a game programmer, some shit like that. Um, and then like, so she programs a game. But is she in the game? Is she just a host in the real world? It seems that she's like, her consciousness has been reset again. Um, and then there's that one scene where like someone wrote the maze from season one, like on her balcony in her apartment. It's just really good. I mean, this episode was really good. And then you got the Aaron Paul and Maeve storyline. What's his name? Fucking Caleb. Their storyline. Where it's like, okay, so Aaron Paul's character's got a kid now. Whoa! Right? So, like, that's how you can tell, again, that there's a, an eight-year time gap. And so, like, Aaron Paul's got, like, PTSD or some shit. Because, you know, from war or whatever the fuck. Right? But it turns out his PTSD was correct. Because someone was trying to assassinate him. And then, like, Maeve comes out of nowhere and slices that motherfucker with a sword. It was great. I mean, this, this episode, his opening, was great. There's a lot of confusion. I don't really know what's going on. Like, how the hell did Ed Harris's character get all the people that worked at the Hoover Dang to kill themselves and each other? I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm going to find out. Let me tell you, Westworld Season 1 to 3, I talked about it yesterday. But if you haven't seen this show, I, I can't recommend it enough. And I want to watch the original movie. And, like, whenever I can find out where it's streaming on... I'll, uh, I'll definitely check it out. There's both. Bodan. There's male and female sex bots. And we got full nudity for both of them. That being said... What a fucking... Like, the opening scene... Again, the opening episode here... 
it it asks a lot of questions but that's how every opening episode has been for season one two and three is that the opening episodes are just like huh like what and it just like it's like you start doing a puzzle right and there's no way to know what any of the shit means until until later so i'm i like i thought it was a good episode very good opening i like the time skip the time gap um it's just good i mean i'm just into it i was i was having a really good time watching this movie or this this show i mean i you know i guess it's a show but it's like an hour long you know so it might as well be a movie it's a long movie it's like a 10 hour movie but what a goddamn show i'm i'm impressed like again like i was saying yesterday i was talking about this shit for like 30 minutes i'm impressed westworld is an impressive program like just to know that television can be this good i'm impressed like i don't know if it's as good as better call saw i mean like that's that's a good fucking show but like it's it's close it's close i mean this is a good fucking show westworld i can't recommend it enough i can't it's just so good like what's going on with the hoover dang i don't know are they all in a in a virtual reality who knows i don't know but i'm excited to find out the answer to those questions i can't you know if you haven't seen the show i don't even know why you're watching this like to spoil westworld in any way is a disservice like i i feel like you are sacrificing your ability to enjoy what it is to be a human if you're being spoiled for westworld i mean like it's it's I don't know. It's just, it's insane. I mean, it's such a good show. I really, I, it's amazing. I, woo! I've never seen.